everybody. Today we're going to make a felted piece of cloth. And what I have here is I have some washed Romney. Now it is, other than being cut off of the sheep and washed, it hasn't been processed at all, which we could felt with it like this, but we'll get a better result if we go ahead and do some carding on the fabric. So I thought that I would show that. So for people who haven't seen this before, they'd get a insight into the process and would be able to evaluate their own fiber as to whether or not it's in a position to be ready to be felted. And what you can see here in these, you can almost see where they're still in the lock structure here and they're kind of clumped together a little bit. This is why I am carding. If I was to try and say spin this right now, I, I probably would be able to because Romney is fairly forgiving, but I would get a better result if I go ahead and card. And what carding does, now you saw here where I was loading the fiber up onto the first of the hand cards. What carding does is it lines up, it, it both fluffs up all of the fibers and it lines them up to where they're all going in the same direction. Now I am not clamping down on these. If you see right here, I am just bringing this top one across just enough so that it is actually catching the fibers but is not burrowing down into the other set of tines. I don't want that. That actually is damaging to your hand cards. So gentle touch here, but you can see already how on this hand right here, these fibers, even though they're not fully coming across, they are lining up and looking a lot more fluffy and like they're behaving themselves. Now here, take a look to the ones that I have here. Look at that. See how they're all lined up? And this is how you take them off. You just take it from the top and you can see the little bends right here that makes it easy for them to go off in this direction, but difficult to go off in the other direction. So if you're having problems, check which direction you're trying to take them off. Now, I could go ahead and do more, and we can see like here in this tightness right here, there, there's a good argument to having, to, to doing that. And if I was gonna spin it, I probably would. But since what I wanna do is felt I'm just gonna leave it like that and I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna work out these others. So what I have, even if there are spots where it's not perfect, I have more than enough materials that are lined up and behaving themselves that the resulting fabric should be fine and the felting process should go easily and smoothly. And for those of you who have not tried it before, felting, generally speaking, is very forgiving. Unless you're trying to do something very, very specific. Uh, like if you're trying to wet felt in a design from start to finish, that can be challenging. But to just get a felted piece of cloth, pretty forgiving. I mean, you got to figure our ancestors were doing this thousands of years ago and if it was super fiddly and difficult probably wouldn't have gotten done all that often you know maybe only for you know very special occasions or you know high-ranking people that sort of thing just because it would be too much of a sacrifice of time you know people got to survive here all righty another round done and I am going to use the magic video to get the rest of this done and you guys can just sit back relax and enjoy Look at that. 
so much better. Okay, now we're gonna do our wet felting. Uh, and what we wanna do is we wanna make a square cloth comparable to the woven and the knitted cloths we made. Now, to get a, a robust felted cloth, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, do you see how these fibers are kind of lined up here? What we wanna do is we want to crisscross them over each other so that we have some going this way, and we have some going this way. And if you're, you know, if you're feeling like experimenting and doing something fun, you can you know, put them all this way, that way, however you like, and it's going to get felted either way. But the point of doing this is to make a felted cloth that when it is done is not going to have any holes or gaps or weak spots because uh, that is that is the challenge with felting is getting a workable fabric that has an even consistency all the way throughout and even if you've done it for a little bit you can still turn up some weak spots on your felted fabric unless you're using quite a lot and you know the other side of that challenge is that if you work with too much fiber, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a felted fabric that is very thick and tight and maybe not suitable for purpose. So if you have a really thick felt, you know, you're not gonna be able to make a, a nice, you know, drapeable coat with it. You might have to make shoes or something along those lines. Alrighty, now we have quite a bit of fiber here. This should make us actually a very robust square. We're just gonna move this over here right now while I bring up the little bowl that I do my felting in. Now, when I felt, I like to use olive oil soap. And to do that, I have a grater here that is just for the soap. And I will just grate some of that right in. And it's actually pretty good to be doing this again. I haven't done any wet felting of note since I left Pennsylvania. So it's been about five years. I haven't, haven't used a lot of this stuff. I know I had a hand agitator, which I haven't been able to locate <laughs> somewhere one of those things, you know. I remember exactly where it is in the old house and have no idea where it is now. Anyway, you don't need a whole lot. And this might even be a little bit uh, of an aggressive amount and I may have to wash it out after I've completed the felting. But the point is you want to have enough that you're gonna get a good amount of suds so that you're gonna be able to felt this fabric. Now I am putting in, this is not boiling water. It is close to boiling, but not completely boiling. And I am just gonna empty the whole thing in here. Now, I don't necessarily need this much to do the fabric that we have. And I'm making do, this is gonna be my felting agitator for today and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take our square here which by the time we're done should be more square I'll make sure that you don't get your hands in there you can wear rubber gloves oh, you can wear rubber gloves if you're concerned about getting your hands burnt or you're worried about that Now, what's nice about when you use hot water and you have soap, it doesn't really take a whole lot of agitation to actually make it felt. It's going to take some time, but it's not going to be a whole lot of hard work. Now, would it be nicer if I had my little hand agitator? Yeah, probably it would, but this is going to work, and it's just going to take a bit of time. Now... One thing to keep in mind that how this is going to finish, this is going to have a rough edge when it's done. And I'm not sure at this point 
whether my nifty new improvised tool is going to make it more of a rough edge or not. But what's nice to know about this process is that even if you run out of something or you have to improvise, this is still going to work. That's just how felting is. That's just how straightforward it is. And what's happening right now is the soap has caused the scales on this wool to open up and the hot water as well. That helps. So as I move them around, they're kind of banging into each other and clamping down on the neighboring hairs. And this is how felting happens. And I am, of course, be mindful, not all sheep have hair with scales. So if you're out there in trying to work with a, you know, a down breed, a South Down or Hampshire or something like that, you could be at this all day and it's not going to felt. So know your wool. You can check uh, my blog post, which is related to these. I'm working on a whole encyclopedia sort of thing of all of the different wools. Right now I've got 60 all ready to try, and that's going to be my next step after I get these done. So you can check that out if you're wondering, does my wool felt? For now, I am going to let the magic video do some of this work for me and for you. So you can just sit back and enjoy the process. Okay, now you can see that this is all holding together, pulling it, can't get it to part this way, can't get it to part this way, this is felted. You can continue to felt until you get it down smaller, you know, you can stretch it to try and even it out, this is fairly feeling it through. It's fairly even up to about this edge here. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with it, but we have a workable piece of felt cloth right here. There you are. Felt cloth. <laughs> 